volcanic eruption, evidence of powerful forces at within the Earth. What are these forces, and what causes them? We've learned a lot about volcanic eruptions in recent years. Scientists continually monitor the Earth tremors at Mount St. Helens in the state of Washington. This instrument is a seismograph. It's connected to a seismometer on the mountainside. These tremors are probably caused either by movement of magma or by gases within the mountain. Or they may be caused by a landslide on the outer surface. An experienced scientist can see the difference. This is what a full eruption can looks like. What causes such an eruption? Think of a coffee percolator that's being heated. As the water at the bottom is heated, some of it turns to steam. The pressure builds until the water and steam are forced up through the small glass throat in explosive bursts or eruptions. Volcanic eruptions are the result of changing heat and pressure within the Earth. But the gigantic scale at which these forces are working is hard to imagine. Mount St. Helens lost 1,300 feet from its top in one explosive eruption. That force is created by heat and pressure miles below the mountain. Let's take a look down there. If you moved lower through the rock layers, you'd find it getting warmer. Near the surface of the Earth, the temperature increases 2 degrees Fahrenheit for every 100 feet we descend. As you go deeper and deeper within the Earth, you reach a depth where the rocky material is so hot, it's molten. opening forms in the overlaying rock layers, this deep molten material is forced to the surface, where it starts to build up as a volcano. What comes out may be steam or other gases, or it may be rocky ash or molten lava, or any combination of these. Fresh lava is usually brittle and light in weight. Ash is usually made up of finely pulverized rock. It can cover the earth for many miles in a downwind direction. After a period of eruptions, the mountain may quiet down and lie dormant for hundreds or even thousands of years. In the geological time scale, that's just a brief moment. If you traveled south through Oregon along the Cascades Range, you'd see many mountains that were once active volcanoes. The mountain has built itself up from nothing but successive volcanic eruptions. The crater formations at the top of some are clues which tell you they recently erupted. But in geological time, that means in the last several, several thousand years. Large beds of once molten lava, now cooled and broken, show that in many places, vast amounts of molten material once flowed from openings in these mountains. This cinder cone once poured out ash cinders and great flows of molten lava. Why do we find this beautiful and sometimes dangerous range of volcanic peaks here, here, near the Pacific coast of the North American continent? They run north and south, parallel to the coast, about 100 miles inland. Geologists say that below us here on the coast, the thick rocky crust forming the continent 
is moving over the thin rocky crust that underlies the ocean. These are great solid plates of rocky material as wide as a continent or an ocean. These plates are moving slowly and steadily against each other. Along this boundary, the ocean floor bends down to a depth where the heat stored within the earth melts the oceanic plate. That heated material, now fluid, forces its way back up to the surface where it pours out in a great eruption. Thus, another volcano is formed. A plate doesn't travel very fast. It may be only one or two inches per year. However, if a plate moves one inch a year for a million years, it'll travel more than 15 miles. Is the same movement happening in other places? As you continue down the coast into California, you find evidence of another natural phenomenon. Earthquakes. The earth trembles, and scientific instruments like this all over the world measure and record the earthquake's intensity. A scientist compares the time it took for two different kinds of shock waves to reach the instrument. Both are formed at the same instant but one travels through the earth faster. This tells the approximate distance and depth of the earthquake. A check at two other recording stations will soon pinpoint the location of the earthquake. an earthquake and what causes it. An earthquake is the catastrophic release of energy within the Earth's crust. Think of a rock layer within the earth that's under stress. The stress builds up where the moving plates come together. Rock layers are rigid, and when the stress reaches a certain level, the layer fractures. This break in the earth's crust produces the shock waves that we call an earthquake. In geological language, this break is called a fault. As you travel through the countryside, you may notice such a fault, where highway construction has provided a cutaway view of a broken rock layer. You can see many clues to past earth movements in these highway cuts. They tell you that there is constant movement in the earth beneath our feet, pushing up here and down there, causing lava to flow in one place, causing the earth to tremble in another. Earthquakes may occur under ocean waters. The damage here is due to rapid changes in sea level along the shore. Or earthquakes may occur near populated areas where hundreds or even thousands of lives might be lost. Where should we expect more earthquakes and more volcanoes? Along the entire west coast of North, Central, and South America, see a, see a concentration of active earthquake and volcanic areas. This is because all along this coast, the oceanic crust is bending down, down into the earth. Just as in California, Oregon, and Washington, earthquakes and volcanoes are the result. If the old crust is being destroyed, where is new crust being created that will take its place? Many scholars and map makers in the past have noted how the facing outlines of South America and of Africa match each other. Were these outlines once joined together in one continent? 
Today, much evidence is at hand to suggest that this is true. Evidence from fossils shows that at one time, the same kinds of prehistoric animals lived on both sides of the ocean. These animals could not have swum across. They must have walked across before the ocean was there. Evidence from geology shows that the same type of rocks can be matched from one continent to the other. These patterns seem to prove the continents were once together. But how did the ocean basin which separates them form? Down along the center of the entire Atlantic Ocean, from north to south, there's a submarine mountain range. This is also called an oceanic ridge. It's created by new magma, or molten material, rising from within the Earth. And it tells us that the Atlantic Ocean is opening at this point. As new ocean floor wells up and is created, the ocean spreads and the continents move apart. The Earth's crust is made up of vast rocky plates that are constantly moving in relation to one another. Some are bending down into the Earth and being destroyed, as on the northwest coast. Some are being newly created, as at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Plate tectonics is the name given to this crustal action. Scientists in many different fields have confirmed the theory of plate tectonics and continental drift. For example, take the study of magnetism. We know the Earth has a magnetic field, which, like this bar magnet, causes iron particles to line up in a particular pattern. When some types of rocks form, the iron they contain also lines up with the Earth's magnetic field. that's preserved in the rock is different depending on whether the rocks formed at the poles or the equator. equipment to measure the magnetic pattern preserved in the rock, scientists can determine the position on the Earth where the rock formed. A study of ancient climate also provides evidence that the continents have moved great distances. It's always been relatively warm at the equator and cold at the poles. However, scientists have found evidence of great ice sheets in the Sahara Desert. This tells us that North Africa was once near the South Pole. Scientists have discovered evidence of tropical coral reefs in the Arctic. This suggests that northernmost Canada has drifted here from a tropical region thousands of miles away. This idea of moving crustal plates helps us to understand ma many things about our Earth. It especially helps us to understand what causes volcanoes and earthquakes and when to expect them. The more we learn about these natural phenomena, the less dangerous they'll be for us and for generations to come. <laughs>